everyone welcome back to another video so today we're going to give you six tips on things that you should keep in mind and and when you're buying a boat right let's get started i'm andrea that's alejo and those are our pairs ozzy and deco we left the corporate world in miami to become digital nomads and chase the wind kiteboarding join us as we sail an adventure in our dream home hakuna tip number one will be to know what you want what i mean by that is what are you gonna use the boat for? So are you gonna live on the boat? Are you gonna use it for charter? Are you just gonna use it like on on weekends, right? Also like know what type of boat you want. Like perform a uh, performance boat or uh, like comfort boat, something that you wanna live on. Exactly. So you definitely want to know the purpose of the boat and what you want with it, right? In our case scenario, we obviously wanted to live on the boat, so that's why we looked for comfort versus performance. That's based on our experience. But our plan was to travel all along, so uh, we had to keep in mind uh, it was a boat that was, uh, the purpose of it was blue water sailing. So we're not looking for something just like in the Miami Bay area or just coastal cruising. We're looking for something where we can cross an ocean, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that was the plan for us. Perfect. So you also want to keep in mind what type of boat are you looking for? Are you looking for a monohull? Are you looking for a catamaran? Are you going to be looking for a power boat? You know, know exactly what you're looking for. Are you? Do you want an owner's version? Do you want a four cabin? Who will be living on the boat? Do you guys have pets? Do you guys have kids? That is all going to the t you know determine how what kind of boat is the perfect boat for you. And then get more specific. Like on what type of engines do you guys want? Like read. Uh, see which which engine is better, Bobo, Yanmar, uh, is it better like cell drives or straight shaft? And little things, I mean, does it have a freezer, does it have a fridge? So go more into depth with the boat you want, so that way you start gathering more information and you go straight to the point. You're exactly. Not... You want to visualize your dream boat. You want to, you know, the, the law of attraction is real stuff. So you want to really visualize exactly how your dream boat is going to look like. The equipment, um, you want to know, like, for example, for us, a couple of things that, you know, made a difference for us is we knew for sure that we want to look, let's say, let's say a at a Lagoon 440 and we knew I had a fly bridge, but since it was only going to be the two of us sailing, he didn't want to go to sleep with me, thinking that I was going to be up there just sailing by myself myself right so those are things that you want to keep in mind if you're sailing as a couple if you have a team are you gonna have you know a larger crew those kind of things are gonna make a huge difference on the type of boat that you're looking for and so so basically you want to nail it down uh, to your dream boat all the specifics equipment engine how many what what are the maximum number of hours that you want to see in your engine like we knew for sure something over 4,000 hours right that wasn't an option for us so we wouldn't even take a look at it um, the let's say the lagoon for 20 it had the option of having a hybrid version right or the or what is it just regular or diesel, diesel engines. engines so Alejo after reading a lot he knew for sure that he didn't want us he didn't want a boat that had the hybrid option. He, we will focus on the 420, but we definitely want a diesel. Part of the story is to just nail it down so you know exactly what it is that you want. You, what are you not willing to negotiate? So let's say for us, it wasn't negotiable that the boat was going to be a uh, diesel engine, right? It was going to be a sail drive. Uh, it wasn't going to have straight shaft. So those were the non-negotiables for us. You need to determine what are your non-negotiables so you can know exactly what it is that you're looking for. Tip number two. So now that you've determined exactly what boat it is that you want, you need to know exactly what is the good thing about your boat, what is the bad thing. Every single boat has something bad about it. So what is the bad thing about your boat? Read reviews, you need to get in forums, you need to go on Facebook groups, get involved, speak to people, get in the community of the uh, of sailing, know exactly what people like, what they don't like. In our case scenario, our boat is definitely not a performance boat, so we cannot expect to go fast in our boat, right? We know this is 100% comfort, um, like kind of a huge hotel condo. condo in the middle of the ocean, right? We knew that. Know exactly what's the good and what's the bad about your boat. That way you'll be able to know the ins and outs of, of your boat. Once you get in it, it's going to be much, much easier. And it's also going to help you when you go and get a survey or a sea trial. You know what to do. Exactly. You know what to look for. You did a lot of research. I didn't research anything, but right? You tell them about it. You did a lot of research. Yeah, like she said, I mean, go on forums, on Facebook groups, ask people, tell them that you're planning to buy a boat, what to look for. They'll let you know right away what to look for. So that way, even if this surveyor doesn't look for those things, 
I mean, you could go to a boat yourself, go take a look, I mean, and see what's wrong. If there's nothing wrong, good, that's a plus. And, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information in the internet now and, and people in this community are very, very helpful. So, I mean, just don't be scared to ask other people, other, other sailors, and yeah. Let's go on to tip number three. Okay, so tip number three will be set your budget before going looking for a boat, right? So because you're not gonna go look for a $500,000 catamaran when your budget is like 250. So I mean, set your budget, always keep in mind that there's taxes, that you have to pay insurance. What else, Andrea? We have ongoing maintenance, so if you guys have seen our previous video, we've spent so much money on just things that you don't think they break. You know, everybody would tell us like, a lot of things break on a boat. You think a lot of things break on a boat, but you don't realize like, how, many? how many and how much it costs and how often. Like it's really often, it's really expensive. It's like, right? So it's a lot of things that you have to keep in mind in terms of like the ongoing maintenance. You have to keep in mind your fuel. You're also going to fuel your diesel tank. So for example, for us, our primary source of power, right? Like to move around is obviously our sails. That doesn't mean that we don't need to fuel our diesel tanks, right? And every time we fuel our diesel tanks, it's $400, $300, $400? $400. About $400. So it lasts us a long time, but it's still money that you have to keep in mind when you're setting your budget for your, for your boat. Insurance. Insurance is expensive as well. It's going to add up. And also remember when you're buying a boat, it's not going to be like 100% like you want it. So you're always going to spend some money like doing little things even if the boat is perfect you might want to do something that you you like or that you wanted to do to a boat so there's always some expense that it's gonna need to go into a boat yeah. even if it's not fixing something right to bring it up to your standards yeah. right? what else <laughs> where are you going to store the boat that's also something that you want to keep in mind. Let's see, what else are we missing? Oh, import fees. If you're buying the boat here, if the boat is not, uh, not only, okay, so something to keep in mind, even if the boat is US flagged, it may not have been imported into the United States. And if it, if it, if it has not been imported into the United States, you need to pay for the import fees. So that's something that you have to, have to keep in mind. It's about 2% of the market price or the purchase it's price. It's 1.5. But everything plus, adds up. A yeah, bunch of fees. All the, like, 2%. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. a bunch of fees and stuff, weird stuff. Well, cost of the boat, taxes, import fees, ongoing maintenance, storage, fuel, and that's pretty much it. And now, insurance. An insurance. And what? Insurance. And insurance. And insurance, exactly. Where are you going to get your money from? Know that before you start looking for your boat, are you going to finance? Are you not going to finance? If so, where are you going to finance? Where are you going to get the money from, right? Yep. That's also something to keep in mind. Before going on to the next tip, we just wanted to let you guys know that we're writing a guide on everything that we experience when buying our catamaran. We pretty much were almost going to buy like four different boats, right? It was one in Europe, one in Colombia, and then when we bought the one here in the United States, which was from Germany. So basically our experience on everything that we went through buying our, um, our, boat. our boat. We're going to nail down all the financing companies that we researched. There's about 20 different companies that we just have a, a, spread a spreadsheet of all of, full of information. Insurance companies that we use for inexperienced sailors like us. Uh, where we looked for our boat, different websites. So pretty much everything where you're going to be able to find it on the guide. So you can just visit www.livinghakuna.com forward slash buy a boat and um just give us your email address once the guide is ready we'll let you guys know so you guys can get it and let's go on to tip number four tip number four tip number four, four. start looking for a boat yes oh. it is time <laughs> she doesn't let me speak <laughs> I talk so much. people say i'm shy oh my god i, try. I am shy but she doesn't <laughs> let me speak okay so tip number four start looking for a boat where to look for a boat there's a lot of places so you can start at websites like yacht world there's also facebook groups there's forums and a couple more websites that you can find in our guide yep so also don't rely on a broker you can use a broker to help you find if they want to show you options for you to go on different boats that would that's great but definitely don't rely on a broker the brokers are only going to show you the 
the boats where they're gonna be able to get a commission so for example if i if a privately owned boat is um is you know it's privately owned it's not being shown by a specific broker they're most likely going to be able to want to sell the boat directly to a buyer and if they go through a broker they're obviously going to increase the price for example when we bought our catamaran the owner said he was selling it directly but he was also going to post it through a broker for thirty thousand dollars more so that's something that you want to keep in mind so don't rely on only on brokers if you're able to find a good boat through a broker that's cool but do your own research Church, nobody's going to put as much as much passion and as much effort as you will when finding your dream boat so yeah that's something that I think you should, should definitely look into yourself what do you think yeah and that way you also you make like the process a little bit quicker because I mean some brokers you you could be working with two three bro brokers and they start like sending you sending you the same boat because they don't know that another broker they contacted you already and they sent you a boat. So I mean, if, if you do like the job at first by yourself and start looking for the boat, that way you know which boats you do want to see and which boats you don't want to see. So you, you don't waste your time and their time also. Exactly. So that being said, keep in mind your dream boat, which is the boat that you established on tip one. That's what you have to keep in mind when knowing when going through uh, there's going to be th hundreds thousands of boats out there for sale so nail it down to the dream boat that you want uh, look specifically for those and wait for the right opportunity to come make sure you're comparing apples to apples okay so it's not the same when you're comparing a lagoon 420 that is in europe in croatia that has just that has been charter a charter boat for you know five years or something or six years who knows what it's completely empty has no equipment no navigational instruments no air conditioning barely any cushions right the sails are really old seven years old so and that boat is you're gonna be able to find it for what 80 90 thousand dollars less yeah probably I mean, yeah yeah, when we found it right we, we we were very interested on buying a boat in europe that has that had the specifics of what i just mentioned um and we were all in for it but then we started adding up the numbers when you start adding up air conditioning that adds up like 30 40k yeah with the generator because generator. they don't have generators they don't have solar power they don't have water makers they don't have anything you have to bring them from europe to bring them to the united states just that just bringing it here is about twenty twenty five thousand dollars right unless you go there and sail it here yourself, yourself but it has to be on a specific season um it has to be uh, you have to be experienced because if you're if if you were us who are completely we inexperienced we didn't know how to sail so doing an ocean crossing was completely like crazy so yeah those things you want to make sure you're comparing apples to apples to you so if you're going to if you're in between a boat here in the caribbean or you know in the u.s or what somewhere in the caribbean versus a boat in europe know that you have to add up a bunch of equipment and a bunch of things that the one here already has so maybe this one has a price higher you have to add it up it's still the same thing and you have you go through less of a hassle right yeah so i mean there's also good good opportunities, opportunities in europe or like other parts of the world but you just gotta look for it and see what and keep in mind yeah right? and, and keep in mind those those things mm -hmm. see what equipment they have and all of the stuff like that exactly. I mean, and remember, all the charter boats that are in Europe, you're going to see a lot of wear and tear in the interior and engines. And I mean, you don't know how, how they were kept. So yeah. Exactly. They, a, a couple of other things to keep in mind when looking for your boat, you have to keep in mind the age of the sails, the number of hours in the engines. Uh, what else? Again, the equipment, AC, you know, again, keep in mind your dream boat, your non-negotiables, bring it down to when you start looking. Tip number five, it is time to make an offer on your boat. So um, a lot of people get kind of stuck here, right? They don't move forward, whether you're a doer or a planner, make sure you just go with it. You haven't spent, you know, six months or a year or who knows how long uh, trying to find the perfect boat. I've heard of stories where there's people that have been looking for their perfect boat for three or four years. Okay, dude, are you kidding me? Or it's gonna be 10 years and you still haven't gotten the boat, right? Like, just um, make your offer and start making offers. You'll be able to build the boat up to your dream boat. So 
um, yeah, so just do it. Just do it. I think that's the thing, right? Yeah, and don't be afraid like to, to just call people and make an offer. I mean, you don't know their situation. They might need to sell a boat right away mm -hmm. and they'll just take, take the money that, that you offer. Yep. Or it might be that the boat needs something like something fixed and it, it could be really simple and then and that owner's just like tired of the boat and they just want to get rid of it. So make an offer, don't be afraid. The worst thing that they could say is no. Make or, a low offer. Yeah, or, or, or they might not reply and just keep like contacting people. Yeah, I harass mean, them. <laughs> well, that's not the idea, but yeah. Keep I calling, mean, just keep people, bothering People them. take it in a bad way, but I mean, just make sure you make the money when you're buying, not when you're selling the boat, yeah. right? You want to buy something that's good at a good price, not something that you're overpaying because the owner says that it's perfect. No, yeah. don't do that. Don't do that. It's not perfect. And it's and don't and try, and, I don't know, maybe, you know, unless the boat is in extremely good conditions, you shouldn't be paying the asking price. I think so, right? You should always make a lower offer, negotiate, be really tough. Just. You know, that's where you make the money. For in our case scenario, our appraisal came back thirty thousand dollars more than what we actually paid for the boat. So again, you make the money when you're buying the boat, not when you're selling it. When you're selling it, it's already depreciated. It's already a bunch of stuff has happened, and then you sell it for whatever you sell it. So make your money when you buy the boat. So we're on to point number tip number six. Six. Tip number six: See it, survey it, and see trial it or sea test it, or <laughs> sail it. <laughs> um, a lot of yes, so you have to see it in person. That's a huge must, and we cannot emphasize on this enough. The pictures that you see online are not the same on as the boat person, as yeah. in person. That is not the same boat. We saw pictures of a catamaran that we saw. Uh, I think um, you guys were able to, I, mean, I can link to the video of, of the boats that we saw here in Fort Lauderdale. One of them was a 440, which was, the pictures didn't seem that bad. And when we went on that boat, I cannot explain horrible. to you, it was horrible. Extremely deteriorated. The conditions were just really bad. The floor was like, you had to redo pretty much everything. And on the pictures, you could not see it. The pictures and were like old before the boat was chartered. So it looked perfect. Yes. But I don't know, since they were like five year old pictures, once you go see a boat, boom, for price. And it, and it was extremely expensive, right? The boat, what they were asking like what, 350 or something? Yeah, like 300. 350, 360, and the boat was in terrible condition. So, yeah, you must, you have to go, definitely go see the boat in person. It is not the same as the pictures. That's a must. And uh, also, because one thing to keep in mind is that nobody will post the things that are wrong with the boat. So you're not gonna see an owner that's going to go, oh, there's a, a crack here. There is, you know, the floor is completely, they're gonna take pictures of that. Most likely no, unless it's a hurricane damage boat. And even then they're not gonna show you how really bad it is, right? Yeah. So definitely go see it in person. Sea trial and survey. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah, I mean, surveyors, mo I mean, if you can get a surveyor that's good, that someone recommended to you, that's even better. But I mean, the experience we had with two surveys we did, they were horrible. The surveyors don't even care about what you're buying. They just want to fill out uh, like a form and give it to you and that's it and get paid. Yep. So I mean, don't even, I mean, don't trust 100%. Can I interrupt? Can I interrupt? And both of the surveyors were certified by SAMS, which is a, it's an American yeah. association that Thanks. certifies surveyors to say that they're good, really good surveyors. So yeah, no, you can keep it. Right. Well, I mean, if you can find someone that's recommended, that's, Definitely that's, go yeah. yeah, go for it. And, and even if the surveyor just go and take a look yourself and see what the surveyor is looking at, go when you do a haul out, check it yourself. I mean, take a look, yeah. look into it. If you can stay on the boat, uh, let's say a night or at least a couple of hours even better because you're gonna find little things that don't work on the boat you're not gonna be like as excited as when yeah you like it. like like when you when you get to a boat you're super excited you see everything perfect you see everything that works you're not going into the little details or that mm -hmm. so you don't find those things that really matter yeah 
like right. like now we we now see things we're like wow i didn't we didn't see this before right we didn't see this there's still and we've been on the boat for four months now four months and there's still things that we didn't see at the time of buying the boat right because you're super excited everything's beautiful everything's nice everything works so the more time you spend on the boat the less excited you are and the more down to earth you are at the time of making the purchase and at the time of making that offer right and now with regards to the surveyors um it's good to go back to point number two where you nail down all the information regarding this boat where you know exactly what to look for what is the downside of your boat what typically damages on your boat um so that way when the surveyors out there with you you can go to with the surveyor and say hey look at this look for this look for this so that way i mean they have the experience to look and see if it's damaged but they're normally not going to look for it right yeah. so they're just going to look at the overall aspect so if you point out the specifics of where they should be looking that's great they'll go into that. because they'll go into the exactly exactly at that you know whatever it is that they're looking at right so yeah so stay on top of your surveyors use your research and just i don't know kind of have like a checklist like know exactly what it is that you need to look for and what it is because you have that one time chance to know what is wrong with the boat if the surveyor makes a mistake and he doesn't find something and then you find it it's going to cost you thousands of dollars yeah. guess what you can't purchase. you can't go back to it yeah they're not going to pay for it it's still going to be on you so do your research know exactly what it is that you and the surveyor need to look for that way it's going to be a much happier and easier um process right and remember like when the surveyor finds anything or something just go back to the seller and renegotiate and tell them like this thing is gonna cost me money to fix or yeah. and and try to get a better price yeah so definitely. that's also a plus for the surveyor and the sea trial that something doesn't work or it needs to be updated or whatever like that's a that's a right a that's, plus. A that's a negotiating yes ¿Cómo se dice eso? ¿Cómo negotiating punto? point, point. Sí. Ah. <laughs> Anyway, so I think that's that for today. We hope that you guys really enjoyed this video and we wish you the best of luck when finding your new boat and hope that in 2020, you're able to acquire your dream boat like we did in this year. So I wish you guys the best when finding your dream boat. If you want more information, remember that we are doing uh, the guide. So just uh, don't forget to go to, go to our website forward slash buy a boat and we will have the guide there once it's ready or put your email so we can let you know once we have it available and that's pretty much it for today right that's it thank you guys so much for watching say thank you thank you for watching thank you make sure for to watching. subscribe and give it a thumbs up like it and hit the bell dun, dun, dun. right <laughs> and that's about it see you guys on the next video peace Bye.